food pantry needs help. The food pantry is serving more guests than ever before, and there are no indications this situation will not continue into the future. The food pantry is by far the most meaningful ministry that Royster Church has at this time. Bill Brown and the current volunteers have been performing masterfully during the increases in volume of food distributed and individuals served more than 800 individuals in March. But, now Bill needs another individual to help Monday through Thursday morning when the food pantry is open. If you can help on one or more of those mornings, please contact Bill or James Gregg ASAP through Louise in the church office. Thank you for your support. Psalms. The Royster Bible Reading Group has finished the New Testament and will now begin reading through the Psalms. We continue to meet on the third Wednesday of the month to discuss some of the passages that have enlightened or troubled us during our reading. If you're interested in joining us, please let Brian or Karen Roberts know and we will get you a schedule. Two sides of the same coin. Crystal Webster is leading a fun discussion group looking at various topics in today's world and how different Christians are reacting to them. We'd love to have more participants. We meet on the second and fourth Wednesdays, via Zoom, at 6.30 p.m. For more information, contact Crystal or the church office. Smiles needed. As our church moves towards more normalization of our worship services in the coming weeks, we find ourselves in need of ushers on Sunday mornings for the 11 a.m. service. If you would like to find out what it entails to be an usher, please contact Donna Dylan Stockberger and she will be glad to talk with you. Looking ahead, Pentecost Sunday is May 23rd. Royster is planning to have a fellowship opportunity in the courtyard between the gathering and 11 a.m. worship. This fellowship opportunity will provide a time for the two congregations to get to know one another. Sunday, May 30, combined outdoor worship at Church of the Ascension at 11 a.m. Please bring your own lawn chair. of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, 
he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come again to your ancient word, seeking the inspiration of your living word. May your living word move in, through, and even in spite of the words of my mouth. In Jesus' name, amen. That word abide comes out frequently, doesn't it? It seems like I was saying it about every other word, abide, abide, abide. Reminds me of the Big Lebowski, the dude abides. But in that movie, abide means the dude obeys or acquiesces, like abides by the law. In this, abide means to remain or to reside with. And that remain has a feel to it. That remain has a slowness to it. A slowness that, that seems to speak to me in this day. When we are coming out of the pandemic, coming out of a time that in some ways seems so slow, and we are getting ready to speed back up again, you can feel the chomping at the bit, as it were, for us to get going. For us to return to productivity, to innovation to acceleration to life as we have always known it. But there's that feeling of returning to the hamster wheel, to returning to the age of modernity that presses constantly forward. German theologian or philosopher Hartmut Rosa talks about how he believes that what it means to be living in a modern age is to have our lives continually and constantly accelerated. Continually and constantly accelerated. He talks about three interlaced, mutually penetrating dimensions that are the source of our speed up in this world. He talks about technological acceleration, acceleration of social life, and the acceleration of the pace of life. Technological acceleration we can all understand. Things move so much faster now. New technology comes out so much quicker. The time it takes to adopt new comes quicker. The time it takes for new to become old, to become passe, to become something of the past moves so much quicker. Before you know it, something else is happening. We all understand that, but he also talks about social life and the very pace of life. In social life, he talks about how our social norms change so quickly. How the rate of decay for a social norm before it becomes the past is much quicker than it used to be. An example that Andrew Root talks about is the show The Office. That show was filmed up until 2013, but here recently Steve Carroll talked about how that show could not be made now because the humor in it did not age well, as they said. The humor in it touches on things that would now be offensive. 
in that short span, less than 10 years, our norms have changed to the point where humor goes from being funny to offensive. It's happening so fast. Even the pace of life, Rosa says, is changing. He talks about how the pace of life, the present, used to be almost a multi-generational thing. Where you were born and you did what your father did. You did what your family did. You inhabited roles and places that your family had always inhabited. And then it became, the present became a lifetime where you weren't bound by what your father did necessarily, but what you chose to do, you did for a lifetime. You married for life. You got a career for life. In some cases, you got a job for life. You put down roots. You stayed in a place. But now, we've accelerated to the point where people talk about multiple lives in one lifetime. They talk about a couple lifetimes ago, I used to do this. Marriages don't necessarily last a lifetime. Not even sure they're intended to in some cases. Not just jobs, but even a whole careers no longer last a lifetime. We talk about how we were different before. In a previous lifetime, I did this, or I was married to them. It all moves so much faster. So much faster. And into that comes this word abide. Abide, abide, abide. Into those, God says, remain. A word that speaks of slowness. The other reading for today comes from the epistle of 1 John. And there's some discrepancy about whether it's the same author in John the Gospel and the Epistle of 1st John. But in a couple of the verses, I can't help but hear the echo. 1st John 4, verses 15 and 16. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. You hear the abide, and that's an obvious link. But the other reason I think that these two may have been written by the same author is that this text fleshes out the previous text. That what it means to abide is to love. To love one another and to love God. That's what it means. John Swinton talks about this idea of abiding in love, of being in love slowly. About the relationship of time and love. He says when time is money, speed equals more of it. When time is love, Speed equals less of it. To slow down is to feel love. And one wonders if you can slow, you can feel love without slowing down. Or if it's the love of modernity that is good for this part of my life but may not be for the rest. I wonder these things as we are coming out of a pandemic, coming out of a time when we were forced into slowness, and I, like many people, didn't enjoy that. But I also find myself hesitant to rush again, to accelerate too much. Helmut Rosa, when he was talking about earlier, about how we are con continually and constantly accelerating, he says this acceleration has the effect of stripping the sacred out of time. Because God invites us to abide, to remain in him. To remain in love, 
both with him and with our families and our communities, to abide. Not to go too fast. When time is love, speed means less of it. So how do we do that as individuals in a congregation? How do we start back into life as we have known it, but not too quickly? Abiding in love with our families, with our church, with our community. How do we slow down? This is the language of love, is to be slow. Japanese theologian Kosuke Koyama says love has a speed. God walks slowly because he is love. If he is not love, he would have gone much faster. Love has its speed. It's a spiritual speed. It's a different kind of speed from the technological speed to which we are accustomed. It is slow, yet it is Lord over all other speeds since it is a speed of love. So how do we come back joyfully but slowly? How do we rejoin the pace of life, still abiding in love for our families, friends, neighbors, and church? That's the question I leave for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the Lord. And the Lord invites us to abide at his table. This is not fast food. It's a simple meal to be sure. But it is one to be lingered over. Because it is one in which we are invited to a table in love. To sit at table with God and others. To be at a meal, to abide. 
Let us pray. Holy God, calm us. Remove us from the pace that seeks always to accelerate. In this moment, put aside our cares for the remainder of the day, for the remainder of the week, and let us abide in the thought that you have invited us, that you have prepared for us a meal. Let us feel that you love us. You have entered our lives, Lord. You have reached out. The vines do not reach, the branches do not reach for the vine. The vine forms the branches. You have reached for us. In Jesus Christ, you have come to walk among us, to show us just how deep your love for us goes. Holy God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us, that we may abide in your love even as we sit at table together, though in separate locations, to partake of this meal. Be with us, Lord. Be with these gifts of bread and wine. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, we give thanks that on the night that he was betrayed, our Savior took the bread, and having given thanks, he blessed it and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body broken for you. Whenever you eat of it, do this in remembrance of me. My friends, the bread of life, take and eat. In the same way, on the same night, our Savior took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. My friends, the cup of salvation, drink. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You have called us, you have fed us. Help us to abide in you. In Jesus' name, amen.